In physics, quasi-particles and collective excitations are emergent phenomena that occur when a microscopically complicated system such as a solid behaves as if it contained different weakly interacting particles in free space. For example, as an electron travels through a semiconductor, its motion is disturbed in a complex way by its interactions with all of the other electrons and nuclei. However, it approximately behaves like an electron with a different mass traveling unperturbed through free space. This electron with a different mass is called an electron quasi-particle. In another example, the aggregate motion of electrons in the valence band of a semiconductor is the same as if the semiconductor contained instead positively charged quasi-particles called holes. Other quasi-particles or collective excitations include phonons, plasmons, and many others. These particles are typically called quasi-particles if they are related to fermions, and called collective excitations if they are related to bosons, although the precise distinction is not universally agreed upon. The quasi-particle concept is most important in condensed matter physics, since it is one of the few known ways of simplifying the quantum mechanical many-body problem. Overview General introduction Solids are made of only three kinds of particles. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. Quasi-particles are none of these. Instead, they are an emergent phenomenon that occurs inside the solid. Therefore, while it is quite possible to have a single particle floating in space, a quasi-particle can instead only exist inside the solid. Motion in a solid is extremely complicated. Each electron and proton gets pushed and pulled by all the other electrons and protons in the solid. It is these strong interactions that make it very difficult to predict and understand the behavior of solids. On the other hand, the motion of a non-interacting particle is quite simple. In classical mechanics, it would move in a straight line, and in quantum mechanics, it would move in a superposition of plane waves. This is the motivation for the concept of quasi-particles. The complicated motion of the actual particles in a solid can be mathematically transformed into the much simpler motion of imagined quasi-particles which behave more like non-interacting particles. In summary, quasi-particles are a mathematical tool for simplifying the description of solids. They are not real particles inside the solid. Instead, saying a quasi-particle is present or a quasi-particle is moving is shorthand for saying a large number of electrons and nuclei are moving in a specific coordinated way. Relation to many-body quantum mechanics The principal motivation for quasi-particles is that it is almost impossible to directly describe every particle in a macroscopic system. For example, a barely visible grain of sand contains around 1017 atoms and 1018 electrons. Each of these attracts or repels every other by Coulomb's law. In quantum mechanics, a system is described by a wave function, which, if the particles are interacting, depends on the position of every particle in the system. So, each particle adds three independent variables to the wave function, one for each coordinate needed to describe the position of that particle. Because of this, Directly approaching the many-body problem of 1018 interacting electrons by straightforwardly trying to solve the appropriate Schrödinger equation is impossible in practice, since it amounts to solving a partial differential equation not just in three dimensions, but in three by 1018 dimensions, one for each component of the position of each particle. One simplifying factor is that the system as a whole, like any quantum system, has a ground state and various excited states with higher and higher energy above the ground state. In many contexts, only the low-lying excited states with energy reasonably close to the ground state are relevant. This occurs because of the Boltzmann distribution, which implies that very high-energy thermal fluctuations are unlikely to occur at any given temperature. Quasi-particles and collective excitations are a type of low-lying excited state. For example, a crystal at absolute zero is in the ground state.
but if one phonon is added to the crystal then the crystal is now in a low-lying excited state. The single phonon is called an elementary excitation. More generally, low-lying excited states may contain any number of elementary excitations. When the material is characterized as having several elementary excitations, this statement presupposes that the different excitations can be combined together. In other words, it presupposes that the excitations can coexist simultaneously and independently. This is never exactly true. For example, a solid with two identical phonons does not have exactly twice the excitation energy of a solid with just one phonon, because the crystal vibration is slightly anharmonic. However, in many materials, the elementary excitations are very close to being independent. Therefore, as a starting point, they are treated as free, independent entities and then corrections are included via interactions between the elementary excitations, such as phonon-phonon scattering. Therefore, using quasi-particles, collective excitations, instead of analyzing 1018 particles, one needs to deal with only a handful of somewhat independent elementary excitations. It is therefore a very effective approach to simplify the many-body problem in quantum mechanics. This approach is not useful for all systems however. In strongly correlated materials, the elementary excitations are so far from being independent that it is not even useful as a starting point to treat them as independent. Distinction between quasi-particles and collective excitations usually. An elementary excitation is called a quasi-particle if it is a fermion and a collective excitation if it is a boson. However, the precise distinction is not universally agreed upon. There is a difference in the way that quasi-particles and collective excitations are intuitively envisioned. A quasi-particle is usually thought of as being like a dress particle. It is built around a real particle at its core, but the behavior of the particle is affected by the environment. A standard example is the electron quasi-particle. A real electron particle, in a crystal, behaves as if it had a different mass. On the other hand, a collective excitation is usually imagined to be a reflection of the aggregate behavior of the system, with no single real particle at its core. A standard example is the phonon, which characterizes the vibrational motion of every atom in the crystal. However, these two visualizations leave some ambiguity. For example, a magnet in a ferromagnet can be considered in one of two perfectly equivalent ways. In the first case, the magnet is envisioned as a quasi-particle, in the second case, as a collective excitation. However, both are equivalent in correct descriptions. As this example shows, the intuitive distinction between a quasi-particle and a collective excitation is not particularly important or fundamental. The problems arising from the collective nature of quasi-particles have also been discussed within the philosophy of science, notably in relation to the identity conditions of quasi-particles and whether they should be considered real by the standards of, for example, entity realism. Effect on bulk properties by investigating the properties of individual quasi-particles it is possible to obtain a great deal of information about low-energy systems, including the flow properties and heat capacity. In the heat capacity example, a crystal can store energy by forming phonons and or forming excitons and or forming plasmons, etc. Each of these is a separate contribution to the overall heat capacity. History The idea of quasi-particles originated in Lev Landau's theory of Fermi liquids, which was originally invented for studying liquid helium-3. For these systems a strong similarity exists between the notion of quasi-particle and dress particles in quantum field theory. The dynamics of Landau's theory is defined by a kinetic equation of the mean field type. A similar equation, the Vlasov equation, is valid for a plasma in the so-called plasma approximation. In the plasma approximation, charged particles are considered to be moving in the electromagnetic field collectively generated by all other particles. 
and hard collisions between the charged particles are neglected. When a kinetic equation of the mean field type is a valid first-order description of a system, second-order corrections determine the entropy production, and generally take the form of a Boltzmann-type collision term, in which figure only far collisions between virtual particles. In other words, every type of mean field kinetic equation, and in fact every mean field theory, involves a quasi-particle concept. Examples of quasi-particles and collective excitations This section contains examples of quasi-particles and collective excitations. The first subsection below contains common ones that occur in a wide variety of materials under ordinary conditions. The second subsection contains examples that arise in particular special contexts. More common examples in solids, an electron quasi-particle is an electron as affected by the other forces and interactions in the solid. The electron quasi-particle has the same charge and spin as a normal electron, unlike a normal electron, it is a fermion. However, its mass can differ substantially from that of a normal electron, see the article effective mass. Its electric field is also modified, as a result of electric field screening. In many other respects, especially in metals under ordinary conditions, these so-called Landau quasi-particles closely resemble familiar electrons, as Crummies quantum corral showed. An STM can clearly image their interference upon scattering. A hole is a quasi-particle consisting of the lack of an electron in a state. It is most commonly used in the context of empty states in the valence band of a semiconductor. A hole has the opposite charge of an electron. A phonon is a collective excitation associated with the vibration of atoms in a rigid crystal structure. It is a quantum of a sound wave. A magnon is a collective excitation associated with the electron's spin structure in a crystal lattice. It is a quantum of a spin wave. A rotone is a collective excitation associated with the rotation of a fluid. It is a quantum of a vortex. In materials, a photon quasi-particle is a photon as affected by its interactions with the material. In particular, the photon quasi-particle has a modified relation between wavelength and energy, as described by the material's index of refraction. It may also be termed a polaritone, especially near a resonance of the material. For example, an exciton polaritone is a superposition of an exciton and a photon. A phonon polaritone is a superposition of a phonon and a photon. A plasmon is a collective excitation, which is the quantum of plasma oscillations. A polaron is a quasi-particle which comes about when an electron interacts with the polarization of its surrounding ions. An exciton is an electron and hole bound together. A plasmariton is a coupled optical phonon and dressed photon consisting of a plasmon and photon. More specialized examples composite fermions arise in a two-dimensional system subject to a large magnetic field, most famously those systems that exhibit the fractional quantum Hall effect. These quasi-particles are quite unlike normal particles in two ways. First, the charge can be less than the electron charge E. In fact, they have been observed with charges of E, 3, E, 4, E, 5, and E, 7. Second, they can be any once, an exotic type of particle that is neither a fermion nor boson. Stoner excitations in ferromagnetic metals. Bogolyubov quasi-particles in superconductors. Superconductivity is carried by Cooper pairs, usually described as pairs of electrons that move through the crystal lattice without resistance. A broken Cooper pair is called a Bogolyubov quasi-particle. It differs from the conventional quasi-particle in metal because it combines the properties of a negatively charged electron and a positively charged hole. Physical objects like impurity atoms, from which quasi-particles scatter in an ordinary metal, only weakly affect the energy of a Cooper pair in a conventional superconductor. In conventional superconductors, interference between Bogolyubov quasi-particles is tough for an STM to see. 
because of their complex global electronic structures. However, high TCQ rate superconductors are another matter. Thus Davis and his colleagues were able to resolve distinctive patterns of quasi-particle interference in BI-2212. A major anafermion is a particle which equals its own antiparticle, and can emerge as a quasi-particle in certain superconductors. Magnetic monopoles arise in condensed matter systems such as spin ice and carry an effective magnetic charge as well as being endowed with other typical quasi-particle properties such as an effective mass. They may be formed through spin flips in frustrated pyrochloriferromagnets and interact through a Coulomb potential. Sky Mayans Spinone is represented by a quasi-particle produced as a result of electron spin charge separation, and can form both quantum spin liquid and strongly correlated quantum spin liquid in some minerals like Herbert's methite.